Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and it is way past time for more Scuttlebutt. That's right, my little regular series where I just derp around, talk about news, whatever suits my fancy. Sorry guys, it's been a while, but it's time that we got one of these back in the queue. This week's some um, game in the background, kind of keeping you entertained while I just gab in front of the mic for a while, brought to you by Tier 9 Premium American Cruiser USS Alaska. This game is in ranked. I recently uh, had, the, had the requirement, the need to travel to the state of Alaska on a business trip all the way to the North Slope. It was very, it was brutally cold. And on the way back, we uh, we had quite a long layover in Anchorage before we caught our red eye flight back to Denver. And I, I was, we were holed up in the Alaska Airlines that, um, Alaska Airlines that lounge there in Anchorage. I busted out the laptop and I hadn't played Warships all week because our connection on the slope was kind of crappy. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to play a game in Alaska while sitting in Alaska, and that is this game. So, a little bit of alaska section here. I mean, if you play boats and you live up there, this is no big deal, but for a, uh, a Texas boy like me, this was a really interesting and, and fun opportunity to kind of get to play the, you know, sort of the namesake, the state namesake of the ship while sitting there. It didn't occur to me until much later I should have also played a game in Anchorage, but, um, oh well, there you go. This is a fun ranked game. It kind of highlights uh, the ship a little bit in this format. Um, it's got a disappointing ending, uh, spoiler alert, but uh, it is it is a fun game nonetheless. Um, what's going on in Shooty Boats? Well, let's talk about let's talk about just the channel here for a minute. Uh, this is the second week of March, and I'm out this week. I'm on vacation. Um, I'm not near a computer. I mean, I'll have a PC with me, but I don't spend on, plan on spending a whole bunch of time with it. So responses to comments and such this week will be a little slow. I I am the, the channel's queued up and ready to go. You guys will have stuff to keep you busy this week. I just won't really be around to talk about it much. Maybe the, I'll, I'll pop in with the occasional comment when stuff pops up on my phone or something. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's also something, I'm gonna try and probably do some videos maybe after I get back. I might even get brave and record one this week while I'm up, uh, up on vacation, but change is coming, uh, to the channel. No, 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 don't take that and wrote the wrong way. I'm not leaving, I'm not gonna quit Warships, but I am trying to expand my repertoire a little bit. And what that means is, you know, I've, I've done some, some playing some TIE Fighter and some other games. I want to try and do more of that, right? I want to try and break into some other things. Um, just try to mix some other games in the repertoire. I'm getting very close to being able to start uh, derping around with uh, board game streaming. Um, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work of that the last two weeks of the month when I get back when I get back home. And uh, my hope is that by early, early to mid April, I can start working uh, working the board gaming stuff into the channel just just to try out. It'll be it'll be messy at first, right? Trying to figure out how to work with multiple live cameras and pr live produce a stream while I'm sitting there doing it, as opposed to just sitting here playing with one camera and I'm playing a video game. So that's going to be a little rocky, but I want to work with it and try to get better at it because I have big big plans for that in the future. So all those there will be a series, you know, as I do those things, those will, those will result. In, in you know different and newer interesting content coming to YouTube as well because I'm not doing it just just for Twitch um, certainly not with the big project that I have in the back of my brain for all of that plus I've got a lot of a lot of games that I backed on Kickstarter a lot of board games coming in the next start they're going to start arriving here towards the back end of March I'm going to have to be developing my miniature painting skills which pretty much don't exist so it's going to be a lot of fun I'm looking forward to it um, in Shooty Boats the news is a little more tame. Um, Update 10.2 is on test server. Um, the second weekend of PTS for 10.2 just ended. This this video will be posting on a Monday morning. So that is all done. Um, kind of this, this this patch is mostly seems to be about the new graphics. Um, there is a almost what what seems to be almost a completely redone graphical engine in the game. I'm I'm not entirely accurate. They've been working on this for a while. They've st steadily slowly rolled this graphic style out to each of the different maps, and now basically they're bringing it to the ships as well. Lots and lots and lots of changes. Just unbelievable. I played a few games on test server with this. It it, it completely changes how the game looks. Like I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, early access for the Italian battleships continues. It doesn't look like they're going to full release this line until 10.3. So you've probably got another three or four weeks weeks to keep working on earning stuff, Italian tokens, etc., fancy camos, etc., etc., etc. So all that stuff still going on. Um, and Cristoforo Colombo, I do not believe, is, is going to be quite ready for release. She might not even come until 10.4. Like, I don't know. I'm speculating here. Don't take my word for it. 
But I mean, ordinarily, if they're going to have the line ready to go, they have it ready to go, you know, when the line releases. But if you'll remember, we went through this with the the American battleship uh, split that went on late last year. Kansas and Vermont, sorry, Kansas and Minnesota came to the client. And they were ready to go while Vermont lagged a whole other patch. So don't be surprised if we see something similar happen with Cristoforo Colombo. And then um, one of the last kind of interesting bits coming in the next patch, key battles are returning. You might remember key battles were a thing like late last summer, early fall. That was the the you know alternate battle format. It was like a sixteen player, you know, everybody enters, one man leaves kind of thing. Um, and there was a whole point system, and and you were just you were just earning like fun rewards. There wasn't like big you know it wasn't really doubloons or or cash or anything you were earning. But it was an interesting game format. It allowed them to to try different mechanics, different things. It was really quite neat. That will be returning to the game, and it looks like it might be here to stay. I'm not positive on that. Don't quote me. I haven't done enough research. I haven't really get a good answer. But it, it's definitely coming back into the client. Um, going through the dev blog. Uh, lots of changes coming to test ships. Pretty much every one of the single, oh, every one of the German destroyers in testing has had a change of some kind. The biggest one seems to be that they've taken away the hydro, and for the moment, they've given them all smoke. I don't like this change. Um, I don't like this change. I will confess that I have played a few games in Elbing that I can't talk about, obviously, but I will say that even on paper, I wouldn't have liked this change, um, just because I feel like the hydro is far more useful. Um, so yeah, I'm not excited about this. We'll see how their their data goes. I think I think they're going to continue to struggle to find a home for these ships for a while. I think they're going to need more than just smoke versus hydro to, to kind of bring them up to where they need to be. Personal opinion. Um, lots more balance changes kind of also talked about in that post and others. Um, Tier 10 Premium Commonwealth Destroyer Vampire Deuce getting a huge main battery buff. Um, almost like 50% going from like 3.5 down to 2.3 on the reload for her guns. Um, I'm really curious to see how that impacts her. Obviously, they felt like she was not having enough uh, damage impact on the battlefield. Um, and they've also made some tweaks to Tier 7 Premium Japanese Battleship Hayuga as well as Tier 5 Premium British Battleship uh, HMS Agincourt. Those are all kind of going through the, the motions right now. I'll put some links down below. You can kind of familiarize yourself if you're interested with what they're doing while the ships are still in testing. Um, they did also recently announce that uh, Tier 10 Premium American Cruiser USS Austin will be available for steel. This is not shocking. We speculated about this in the first look video I did a while back because literally they explicitly said she was going to be replacing USS Summers in the armory. And there you go. Summers was available for steel. And now, but it is 100% confirmed now, Austin will also be available for steel. I'm not sure how I feel about this ship yet. Um... I'm, I'm, this is this is one that I might ordinarily by the time a steel ship releases I've got a pretty good sense of it. Austin I don't feel that way. I've seen lots of mixed mixed feedback on her along the along the way. I'm probably actually going to do something I don't normally do and that spend some time on my um, uh, press account when she releases to finally kind of get a sense of, of what this ship is all about. Is it worth it? Um, and and am I do I want to invest the coal basically because I just right now I, I don't I don't have a good answer. I just don't. And then um, Tier 9 Premium um, Italian Battleship Marco Polo will be entering the uh, the, ar the armory for coal when the time comes. I think it's next patch. I think it's, it might actually be next patch. Um, they haven't announced... Yeah, they, I don't think they've actually given a date yet, but they just said she will be coming for coal. Um, anyhow, the Marco Polo, I was very, very high on when they first put her in the client for testing. She looked like basically the bigger, badder cousin of, of Roma, right? And I love Roma. Um, but then they nerfed the hell out of her detection and they nerfed her armor scheme a little bit. And now I look at the ship and I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. I just don't know. Um, we'll see this. The, both of these ships, I think need a little more, a little more gameplay testing. Uh, that's the kind of thing that I might try and do on stream, uh, after I'm back from vacation. Um, random side note, the last two weeks of March, I am going to be trying to do a little more streaming than the normal. Like my normal schedule is just two nights a week. But I'm going to be batching it for a couple of weeks, so I'll probably mix in some more streams. They won't all be boats, um, but I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going to try and, like I said earlier, I'm going to try and start mixing in some other games. Um, but I'll probably at least do a little bit of boats as a part of each stream, maybe two hours of boats, two hours of I don't know, Tie Fighter or something. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're looking for, uh, looking at, to, to kind of follow me, uh, come come find me on Twitch and and chat later in the month. Then um, I'll be doing some a little more boats, but I'll be trying to space it out and maybe do it in smaller doses. Um, we're also going to get an Axis and Allies mode. This has been announced. I think they're going to start testing this in 10.2. Let me go over here and look at the blog again. Um, it just says, in the near future, they're going to be conducting a closed test for a new battle type inspired by real-world naval battles, Axis versus Allies. So you'll have... They're focusing this right now on Tier 8, 
Um, so you'll have um, Japanese, German, and Italian tier 8 ships versus um, American, British, Russian, French, Pan-Asian, and European tier 8 ships. Now, on paper, this looks like a horrible, horrible mismatch. In other words, the um, Axis carriers are arguably inferior. The Axis have no, no access to radar. Um, you know, there's some pretty no, there's some pretty significant and notable differences, right? Um, but anybody who's played random battles in this game should know that you cannot just look at paper, the you know, matchup on paper, and decide it in advance. So. We'll see. However, there is no questioning that on paper the Allies have some pretty significant advantages here. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. This, I'm uh, for starters, this is something people have been asking for for a long time. I'm excited they're finally going to be bringing it to the game. I'm bummed that it's taken them this long, but at least it's coming, and we'll see how it shakes out when the time comes. I'm looking. This will be something fun to do on stream, something fun to do with other viewers, that kind of thing. And I guess the last thing we should we should talk about, if, especially if you're here on YouTube and you're busy watching things, of course, one of the big the big the big you know latest drama is that is that uh, EU community contributor Flamu was was recently removed from the CC program. Um, I'm not really surprised at this, guys. Um, you know, you, you've. You've, this has kind of been coming for a while, right? Let's be honest here. Flamu, Flamu is one of the, 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 the guys that's grown large enough. He doesn't really need the CC program, right? Like, he's got enough viewers and enough things to do on his stream and his channel. He doesn't he doesn't really need it. So, um, he's, he's sort of been pushing the envelope <laughs> to see what he could get away with for quite a long time. It's been obvious to those of us inside the CC program for a while that there was, there was kind of a double standard, right? In the sense of, there were things that that had been happening for a while. Some of them were very public. Well, this was obvious, right? That that he was allowed to kind of you know get away with, whereas the rest of us would have gotten slapped down for it, right? This wasn't this wasn't this wasn't a secret, okay? And many of us pointed out to wargaming along the way, fellas, this is not a secret. We we can see this happening. We're not stupid, okay? Um, but I guess finally they just they tired of all the drama for whatever reason. I don't know what what the straw was that finally broke the camel's back. Um, he's been pushing the envelope pretty steady for a while, and I think some of that was because he wanted to see where where they would actually get. You know, how what's it going to take for them to finally get rid of me, right? What's where is that line? Let's just keep towing the line and pushing the line, right? I've met Flamu, right? He's a great guy in person. His online persona is a bit of a jerk, but he's not stupid, okay? The guy is not an idiot, so you can't possibly convince me that that he didn't know this was where this was all going, and he also is smart enough to know better that he doesn't need the CC program, all right, to continue to be successful doing what he does on stream. He's, he, you know, Wargaming removing him was automatically going to be um, a boon to his financial prospects, and we saw that this week, right? The announcement came in, he had several big streams, he made all this money. I mean, that was always going to be the case, right? Because for whatever reason, for what, you know, rightly or wrongly, he has sort of cultivated this persona as the anti-Wargaming guy on on Twitch and, and YouTube. And, I mean, it's a great position to stake out if that's, if that's what you want. Um, I don't always agree with what he says because he tends to take the most negative view of things in a lot of ways. Um, sometimes I think that's because he does genuinely believe it. And sometimes I think that's because he knows it, it will drive, it will drive people to his channel, right? It will drive clicks because, you know, there's, there's fewer things in life that people love to consume than, than outrage and, and hatred and all the rest of this stuff, right? And, and, and he does that very well, right? So, um, he's a, he's a good guy. I'm, I'm, I, we don't yet know if he's going to still be available to, to do cont streaming. I hope that he is. Um, I really enjoy his commentary in King of the Sea. Um, we'll see if they bring him back or not. I mean, that, that might be separate to this, right? I mean, we've had non-CC people come in and do commentary before. Uh, I don't, I don't know why it would necessarily, it wouldn't be a requirement now, I wouldn't think. So, anyways, we'll see. Uh, I wish him all the best. Uh, he's not going anywhere, I don't think. Wargaming, I mean, Warships is still kind of the bread and butter over where, in his little corner of the world. So, it would not shock me to see him continue to do it. But, obviously, he's been kind of ranching out and doing other things. So, all the best to him, and uh, and we'll see where it goes. But, anyway, guys, that's going to that's gonna wrap that up. Um, like I said, I'm again, I'm on vacation all week. I'm out. Um, you know, you can try to bother me here on, on, uh, on YouTube or whatever, but, and I might reply to a few odds and ends, but I'm trying to actually like step away from the machine all week. Like it's, I need an intentional break from a lot of things. So don't be surprised if replies are slow or I just don't reply at all. Okay. Anyways, you guys be safe, wash your hands, and I will catch you the last two weeks of March. We'll be back doing boats and some other things on Twitch. I'll see you then. Take care.